Hey, Solange, how are you? Hope you're doing good. Hope you all are well. Switching it up a little bit today. I know it is definitely warm and why am I wearing a leather shirt? Well, we have to have all our looks inside, right? Hey girl, hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing good. Yes, hope everything looks okay on my end. We have Kayla Boyd, who's gonna be coming to join us from Kayla's, Kayla's Chaos. So it's gonna be exciting. Hi to everybody that's coming in. Hello, hello. Our guest should be here shortly. How's everybody doing? How's everybody um, during this quarantine? Hello, hi. Hi everybody that's coming in. Hello, our guest will be here shortly. Hope you all are well and thank you for joining. So we have some great, great, great discussions that we're gonna be have, that we're gonna be having um, during the live. So it's gonna be great. So just a few more minutes, we're gonna give our guests a little time to join in and then we're going to proceed with the conversation. Hello, our guest is here. I'm going to send a request. Okay. Hi, how are you? Sorry for that little uh, gap. I had turned off, um, put my phone on silent. So it was like none of these notifications don't interrupt our conversation. So. Oh my gosh, of course. Yes. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you? <laughs> looking good. Looking oh, good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, Let me turn you. up my volume real quick. Okay, I hear you a lot better. Say that again. Oh, I said I'm good. I'm great. How are good. you doing? Good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm not going to lie. I was a little stressed out because um, the COVID cases are increasing in Florida. And that's where I'm originally from. So I have a lot of uh, family and stuff down there. So I was just mm -hmm. telling them, like, please be careful. Don't don't listen to some of the people down there. Please wear a mask. Please continue to protect yourself because uh, being in New York City and with us being the epicenter, we saw how things got so scary so fast. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my family's in Michigan, so it's better there now. But, yeah, at the time it was scary here. It was scary there, too. So it's really stressful. Yeah, it is. It is. So I'm just hoping for the best and hoping that within due time, people do take the precautions to continue to quarantine and really keep away from others and just really practice social distancing and safe practices as well. So, uh, so pod, this thinking positive, and I know it'll be great. So uh, a few more people is coming in, give like uh, probably like three more seconds here, some more people joining us. And then without further ado, we have Kayla Boyd that's going to be joining us from Kayla's Chaos. Okay, sorry, my Caribbean accent. <laughs> no, I love it. Chaos. Never apologize. <laughs> we pronounced everything wrong. Excuse me. So she's going to be talking a little bit about her blog. We're going to get to know her, and we're going to get to know a little bit about her blog as well. Hey, everybody that's joining in. So yes, without further ado, let is get let us get started. So tell us your name and tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Kayla, and uh, my day job is I'm a shopping editor at BuzzFeed, which is pretty cool. And then in addition to that, I've been blogging since 2014, so like six wow. years, yeah, oh. um, at kaylaschaos.com. And I've like, you know, started to get into like YouTube and TikTok and all that stuff, so yeah, you know, just constantly writing and creating. And that's pretty much all I do all the time. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So how did you start your blog? When did you know that you were like, you know what, I definitely have this creative talent. And I really want to just put this out there for people to be able to experience. Yeah, so I decided to start blogging. I was in college. Um, I think it was my around my sophomore year. And I knew I wanted to be a fashion writer, but I was in Michigan, like the Detroit area. And I was like, I don't really know how to do that here. I don't know anyone who does that. So I just decided the best way for me to show I can write about fashion is to just do it. 
So I started my blog really just because I didn't know how else to get practice and how else to kind of experiment writing with fashion and styling and all, you know, all the stuff I knew I wanted to do. And in addition to that, like, so I'm biracial, I identify as a black woman, and I didn't see a lot of, you know, curvy black women in media. And I was like, I really want to be in this space. But, you know, like, I... I don't know how. So I really started right. my blog, you know, to stem from all of those things. And, um, and yeah, I just never stopped because I love it. It's like my baby. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, and, I, and I think kudos to you for knowing for knowing what you wanted and knowing that you wanted to be able to push your platform and push who you are. You're not going to just say, oh, because I like this, I gravitated towards that. You gravitated towards things that represent who you are and put that on a platform. And I think that's so important that Nowadays, I think people are learning to appreciate people's self-identity within their blogs. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, really just kind of not being afraid to be who you are is something you kind of have to learn, you know, through time. Right. And I think my blog kind of helped me go from being unsure, you know, about how do I own this space as being plus size being, you know, a person of color, all those things, and just kind of putting myself out there helped me grow into it. Right, right. And that's amazing. That's amazing. So my next question that I want to go into is you were born in Detroit, but currently reside in New York. Can you explain to our audience the differences in the cities? And how did you eventually move to New York? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So Detroit is just a lot more chill, I'd say, you know, than, yeah. <laughs> than New York. <laughs> nothing is like New York, you know, like in Michigan, I would drive, I would hop in my car, you know, it's just like, it's like a convenience and all my family's there, you know, and then coming to New York, it is everything just feels a little bit harder. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. <laughs> it's, you know, it's more expensive. Um, you gotta, you know, navigate the trains and walk more places Then it's more competitive. So, um, yeah, it's, it was a big adjustment. Uh, I kind of eased my way in by going to grad school. So after I, I went to Eastern Michigan University, which, you know, was like a, I'd say like a mid-sized state school. And um, I was like, okay, what now? So I went to Syracuse to get my master's degree. And, you know, that's upstate New York. So kind of eased my way into getting to the city. And after I graduated from Syracuse, I got a paid internship in the city and was like, okay, I'm going straight there, not looking back. So <laughs> I've been in the city. Oh my gosh, today is actually my three year New York anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Oh my gosh. I mean, let me tell you, I think that is so exciting because I was speaking to another friend of mine and she actually just hit six years and she, I believe, is from Detroit also. Wow. And, uh, yeah, her name is Nick. I'll send you her information afterwards. And yes. uh, we, and we were talking about how important that is. You have to celebrate that milestone because, like you mentioned, New York is an attitude in itself. Oh my so, gosh! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is an attitude. It is a person. It's a lot of things in itself. So being able to be established here, being able to be happy here, and being able to live here is just quite the accomplishment. It's not easy. It's not easy. And you know, it's all the little things that, you know, seem so easy other places like finding an apartment is such a struggle. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Going to the grocery store when you no longer, you know, have a car or anything. It's, it's just every yes. little thing is just harder. So it feels like an accomplishment to be here for sure. It is. It is. So one of my other favorite questions to ask um, with uh, New York is, what are some of your favorite places in New York that you've grown you've grown to love while living here? Oh yeah, so um, I live in Queens right now. I'm in Astoria, and I really like this little neighborhood. Uh, I feel like the best thing is all the different kinds of food. Of oh, course, yeah. like there's so many foods I love in Detroit, but in New York, you just have such so many options. You know, like <laughs> such a vast pool of food. So I love that. Um, and all the touristy stuff I used to kind of do when I first got here and, you know, I don't do it as much anymore, but I feel like there's such a charm in New York and like being able to just 
go to Central Park or, you know, yeah. or be at Rockefeller Center. I used to work there. And I was like, this is so crazy. You know, like all these very uh, iconic New York things are just kind of become a part of whatever, you know, everyday things. Right, right. Um, and there's so much art here. So that's one of my favorite things. Um, I go to a lot of like pop-up exhibits and oh, nice. all the museums, you know, I feel like that's always so fun and so cool because it's it's limitless in New York. Yes, <laughs> I agree. And I think um, with New York being the mecca to a lot of things, such as fashion and home to a lot of headquarters, there's always something grand. And I like to say in New York, it, they don't do anything small. It's either big or uh, big as possible. So <laughs> yes. that's very nice. That's very nice that moving from Detroit and being established in New York and being able to create your home for yourself and getting familiar with your area. And I'm familiar with the story and the story is I, like you mentioned, has great food. So <laughs> I have to keep away <laughs> because I was like, Oh, I want to buy this. This, this is amazing. It's amazing. So mm -hmm. definitely um, moving on to our next question. So tell us a little bit about your blog. So I know that you mentioned that you've been blogging for six years. So what type of things do you personally love to write about on your blog? Oh, yeah. So um, obviously, style is like my heart. I double majored in fashion merchandising when I was an undergrad, because like I, I said this earlier, but I really wanted to be a fashion writer. I wanted to bring diversity to the fashion media. So yes. that's always been really uh, important to me. And I feel like now I work at BuzzFeed, which is cool. But I my job as a shopping writer is to really focus on like products and, you know, and like do BuzzFeed type roundups. So right. I feel like my blog is a fun place to just be so creative. Like if I want to write about a New York City museum exhibit, I can do that. If I want to write about a cool, like an outfit that I really like, I can do that. And just kind of having that space to do whatever I want is so fun. Yes. Um, but yeah, my main things are definitely like plus size streetwear. I love sneakers. I'm a big like comfort plus fashion type of girl <laughs> oh, yes. I've seen your post and you're yeah. the queen of that and I totally agree with you I think uh living in New York we could agree that uh trying to walk in heels on the train is a dangerous task yeah no and I just when I tell you I don't know how people do it <laughs> I don't have the energy <laughs> I would so much rather like throw on colorful sneakers with a skirt then try to wobble around in the heels I mean respect to everyone who does but I don't have the energy <laughs> <laughs> I agree energy patience uh, at this point and it's now it's getting warmer in New York and I think people underestimate the heat here as well you know they just think like oh it snows all the time no it gets pretty warm and I think that yeah too warm at times so it's I, I think like you said being comfortable and still having to identify your personal style by colorful clothes and so mm -hmm. on is, is a key as a key to being you if that makes sense as far as just continuing to um display your personal style yes absolutely and one of my like biggest things that i like kind of try to portray in my blog <laughs> and social is like you can be fashionable and still be comfortable like you know i feel yes. like when you're comfortable you're so much more confident in yourself you know like other than when you're constantly tugging or pulling on something or you know like just you're in pain <laughs> you know yes. So yes. i like to be comfortable because i know i'll feel more confident great great and i agree with you 100 percent wholeheartedly because I think that once, like you mentioned, being comfortable, I know for myself, especially when I'm commuting, uh, well, things have changed now. But before when it's like rush hour and stuff, and you're comfortable and you may have to stand at certain times and stuff, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. I've had conversation with strangers and we're talking about, oh, man, I like your shoes or something like that. So it just makes all the difference. Really? Yes. Especially, yeah, when you're like standing on the train and it's like you're going to be there for 45 minutes. There's no seat. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> I love my favorite train is at home now. Just right here. Just <laughs> Girl, I don't miss the commute. I miss I miss the office. I used to work in the office and I miss it, but I don't miss the commuting. <laughs> No, not at all. I don't miss the commuting uh, at all. I think um, yesterday I had to go into the city for the first time in a long time. And now um, I'm commuting from Long Island before I was commuting from Queens. 
And um, the LIRR is not so bad, but it was when I got into uh, Penn Station and then I had to walk over to 34th. And I'm just like, oh man, yeah, now I remember why the commuting is crazy because the trains were delayed. And I was like, oh, like 18 minutes. So I was just like, oh no, <laughs> that I don't Bro. know. Yes, oh, it's so much. Commuting is just a thing in itself. Oh. Yeah, it's too ridiculous. So moving on to our next question is, what made you interested in pursuing your career as an editor? So I know that you've talked about uh, coming into New York and grad school and stuff. Uh, can you explain a little bit about what type of things, uh, such as internships or different things you have to do to prepare so you could be in your position now? Oh, yeah, totally. So like I said, so when I left undergrad, I had no idea the next step. So I use grad school to kind of figure out how do I get from college student to a journalist because that was really the goal since I was a kid I knew I wanted to write so um, I was like but well, how you know this is a really hard field so, yeah. <laughs> um, so I uh, Syracuse helps a lot they you know you just kind of meet more people they have a big focus on journalism at the Newhouse School so that was a major stepping stone for me and kind of uh, pushed me in the direction of figuring out how to get a good internship. So my first internship was at Nylon Magazine, and that was in 2017. Um, so before I finished grad school and before I moved to New York City. So I was actually commuting from Syracuse to New York, which is four hours, on wow. the bus <laughs> two days a week, and it was crazy. Um, that was like the wildest experience, but I was like, I have no internship and I know people who like live in, in the city or went to school in the city have four or five internships and I have none. So I knew I just had to do it and it was worth it. Um, I got, you know, I was a digital editorial intern, so I got to help write for the website and that was like so major and, um, leaving there and learning to just kind of freelance a little bit more helped me get my first paid job which was a, you know a smaller website called cafe mom um and once oh. again it was something I didn't think I'd be doing because I'm not a mom and I <laughs> didn't plan on working for a mom website but uh you know you just kind of take what you can get in journalism and figure right. it out and um, I eventually after interning for a while became a lifestyle reporter and that was actually a lot of fun because I got to write a little bit about fashion, a little bit about product, um, a little bit about like entertainment stuff. Like I yeah. was covering Kardashian pregnancies at the time. <laughs> so oh, wow. It was very, very wild. But a good thing about those like small, smaller publications or those beginner jobs is you kind of get to try a lot of things and do a lot of things. So it's, it was really helpful. And um, yeah, from there, I ended up in a shopping editorial job at the Today Show, which was really cool. Um, and that was through a connection, a friend I met in grad school. So that's why they always tell you like, network, 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 because it's, it really does help. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. awesome. That's, that's awesome. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. No, ahead. no, you're fine. I was just gonna no. say, that was, that was cool. <laughs> Wow, that is so awesome. And I think kudos to you for definitely um, knowing the knowing what you wanted for yourself and being able to push those limits by saying that, hey, even though I'm a Syracuse, I'm not going to let this distance stop me from trying to be able to get opportunities. I'm going to happen to go, come back, still network, still be the best that I can be. And that takes a very strong person. So I think that is why New York City is for you because it is for the, it's not for the weak hearted people, I guess you could say, as far as wanting to push yourself you have to be self-motivating yeah and you, you have to be okay with being a little uncomfortable for sure <laughs> i was very uncomfortable that first year here i was like it's gross it's expensive <laughs> yes yes it's definitely uh it's definitely a uh, eye-opener i guess you could say compared to what our perspectives may be and um, a little bit back with your internships. So can you also tell us a little bit as far as what were some key uh, things that you took away from your internship that is definitely uh, something that you're doing in your career now? Oh, yeah, sure. So just kind of a willingness to try a lot of different things. I kind of touched on that before, but um, at, so at Nylon, they were working on like a Black History Month type of like 
a vertical, you know, type, like a big project where they just wanted a lot of content and they were lacking black editors at the time. So um, they tapped on me as an intern to like help write some stuff. And I was like, yeah, I want more bylines, you know, like I want to write more. So that was a great experience. And oh my then gosh. in my next internship at Cafe Mom, I think I ultimately got hired there because I, same thing, was just like, I want to do more. I want to try this. So I would help them with videos and with social media projects and like things that really were outside of my job. Of course, like you'd want to be careful. It's so easy to overwork and, you know, yeah. not really not value yourself enough and I've been guilty of it for sure so you have to be careful but I think in the beginning stages of your career it's just kind of something you gotta do you gotta just put yourself yes. out there and you know and try to try to try new things you might end up liking something you really had no idea that you liked so I agree I agree and I think those are great tips and I would say thank you for even sharing those because I think, like you mentioned, you can really underestimate yourself so much to the point where you're saying like, yes, so many things, not knowing that you're not giving yourself that balance, you're not mm -hmm. giving yourself that commitment, and you're not giving yourself that time to be able to say, okay, you know what, yes, I do have these different tasks here, but I do want to be able to have that me time so I could be able to give my 100% in each assignment that I may have to do. So yeah. that is really great that to know the understanding of that, I guess you could say. So, wow, that is, a, that is great, great, great information. So I moves on to my following question is, what obstacles have you faced in your career and how did you overcome them? Oh yeah, so my biggest obstacle is probably kind of like a waiting game of like trying to be somewhere where I was comfortable, you know, to an extent. Um, so, uh, my first like job job that I mentioned at the mom website, I was a intern for like, I think it was eight or nine months because they kept renewing my internship and I was trying to find, of course, like a more permanent job, but it's hard, you know, there's not a lot of jobs yes. in journalism. So, um, I kept accepting, you know, to just kind of stay on until they had room for me. And it was hard because you're always like, well, when are they gonna, you know, decide that there's no room for me or no budget for me or, you know, it's hard. And then I did finally get hired there. But then when I left there to go to the Today Show, that was a contract position. So ultimately, it was supposed to end after a year. And um, I ended up getting the job at BuzzFeed before I hit that year mark. But my hardest time was just constantly feeling like I have to look for a job and not having that security and trying yeah. to, you know, just knowing like I'm putting in all this work, but when am I going to get paid more? When am I going to, you know, have benefits, you know, all those little things. And um, it's just, yeah, it, it can be hard to kind of get somewhere where you feel good. <laughs> it's a process yeah. sometimes and it can be scary too, especially when you have, New York City rent so Ooh, yeah <laughs> yeah I so. agree I agree I think um like you mentioned about New York City rent I think New York City rent is wow it's a different topic for a different day and I I, I really un I really do not underestimate the people uh, like people that live here and how hard they may work if they may have like different multiple streams of income just so they could be able to be comfortable here. I think it's a difference of surviving and being comfortable in New York. And when I mean being comfortable, being comfortable to still be able to afford rent and to be able to take transportation and, and be okay with that financially, because it does take a lot of sacrifices as far as working very hard, dedicating your time to doing what you have to do just to make sure that you're okay on the other end. So definitely kudos to you for knowing how hard that you wanted to be able to see these opportunities for yourself and continue just keep working hard and not letting anything just like oh no i'm just gonna take this or something didn't work out you were just gonna give up on it you kept pushing so i think that is so inspiring oh thank you so much yeah it's oh man you just really gotta push yourself the limits because i wanted to go back to michigan once i remember i was like um, I live with my best friend. She's my roommate, and she's also from Michigan. And I was like, girl, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's it's nice to have um, someone here, too, because I don't have any family here. So 
we just kind of talk each other out of the bad times and <laughs> are like, you yeah. got me here. <laughs> so. That's great. That's great. And I think that's another important thing that you said, having a support system, uh, because not have not knowing a lot of people here or not even having family here is it's very I, it's very hard because at least when you have some kind of family here or something you could be able to turn to them because it's a familiar face to you mm -hmm. and it could get really you know it could get very lonely and sometimes you're just so overwhelmed like oh man what am i doing so i totally understand i totally totally understand the feeling but at the same time i know that your best friend she saw more in you to know that hey you can't give up on your goals and knowing how far you came you, to continue to keep pushing towards your goal, that is what a best friend is for, to push you in the right direction. They're like our extended yes. family, as I like to say. So. 100%. And I feel like, you know, like, our family is so great, but there's things that a friend will say to you that, like, your mom probably won't, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, your mom's yeah. going to be like, Hearing you on all the time, but your best friend might be like, "Well, girl, get it together." <laughs> so yes, 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 yes. Yes, they want to give you a tough, tough love. Uh, uh, definitely coming from a mother's perspective. So I'm so happy to hear. That. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy. So I'm gonna move on to the next question. Is your platform has been advocating for body positivity? What advice would you give to someone who may be struggling with confidence on social media? And maybe afraid to start that initial blog or to start on Instagram or start posting content on Instagram? Oh, that's such a great question. So I feel like the main thing that I'm learning every day when it comes to body positivity is it is ongoing. You don't just wake up and be like, I decided my body is perfect and I love it. And of course, we'd all love to feel that way, but it's hard. It is yeah. such like a talking yourself out of, you know, those negative things that were taught at such a young age, you know, so I, I'll take a photo and I'll be like, oh my gosh, like I don't look good in that at all. Like, you know, this part of me looks off or looks, you know, whatever. And it's really just, you know, cha like changing your mindset and being like, it's okay. This is my body. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's okay. And I just have to accept it. So I think it's good to try to focus more on the things you do love about yourself and really just try to accept the things that maybe you don't love. You know, it's like I said, it's ongoing. And as far as like putting it out there and, you know, being who you are in social media, I know that's definitely going to be a lot harder for some people. So I'd say don't push it. Don't force yourself. Just right. work on, you know, work on like internally, like looking in the mirror and being like, okay, I look bomb. Like, I look good. This outfit looks good on me, you know, instead of trying to really force it and try to force something that you're not comfortable with, work on being comfortable with yourself and then putting your best self out there. Wow. I think that is great advice because I think um, I always like to say that you come first before anything. And if you can't be able to love yourself, you cannot be able to love the image behind yourself as well, as I like to say. You want to be able to love yourself to the way, love yourself in a way where it's like, wow, you can uplift yourself out of any situation. And I think that changing, like you mentioned, having that mindset of positivity, because I know some days is hard and not every day is always sunshine, but I think knowing that better days are to come and just knowing that, hey, this is who I am and accepting who I am because we're all different, but our uniqueness is what makes us who we are. And just accepting that is just beautiful. And that's why I loved your blog and love who you were because I felt that, wow, you know, this is such an important image. And I felt that with your core values, I would love for people to definitely hear this conversation because it's very rare, especially with a lot of things that we're seeing on social media, plus that we're seeing on TV as well. We often think that, okay, we may have to gravitate towards certain clothing or certain things because those things are trendy. But that doesn't necessarily mean that just because it's trendy, we have to wear it too. No, it's okay to be us and it's okay to love us also in the process. Yes. Oh my gosh, exactly. And I feel like uh, it's even been hard for me, you know, at times to be like, are people going to judge me because I just love to wear sneakers and I love to be comfortable, <laughs> you know, but I also love bright colors and animal print. And, you know, are people going to be like, who is this big girl, like, you know, causing a scene, but you have to be like, that's okay. Like, I, yeah, exactly. I am comfortable. <laughs> I feel good, you know, and once you kind of 
once you kind of tell yourself like I look good I feel good then you know whatever other people say it doesn't hurt as much so I agree I agree and I like you mentioned that's one of my favorite things I like to say oh I feel good like do I honestly feel good yes I feel great so hey I'm just gonna go with it and I think that you never know how many people you inspire along the way a hundred percent like there's of course there's gonna be people who you know message you or tell you you know like oh hey girl I like that outfit I like what you said but there's so many other people who might not say anything but that doesn't mean you didn't impact people and I have to remind myself that you know like having a a smaller platform sometimes you know it's stressful because we're all chasing numbers we're all chasing likes but at the end of the day it's like if uh, two people liked what I put out there today like I still impacted those two people you know and you just have to constantly remind yourself that you're you're impacting people even if you don't think you have a platform even if you know you're not seeing like a huge following you know you're still leaving a positive impact on people even if they're not outright saying it right oh man this is like bringing joy to me because i think that you've really captured a lot of what people are thinking and it's true you know even if you impact one and one is just as many as a hundred and I think that definitely staying true to yourself. I saw some really great comments here. I was going to uh, go back and read it. Sorry, people, I'm not ignoring you. It's just going <laughs> up so quick. It says, that's really powerful. Mindset is everything. Thank you, Real Sophisticated Joy. Um, you don't have to hop on every trend. Do what you are comfortable with. And that is, that is very true. That is very true. That is so true. So I definitely wanted to uh, talk about uh, New York Fashion Week and your experience in New York Fashion Week. So if you could tell us a little bit about how, um, how, how long have you been going to New York Fashion Week and your street style for New York Fashion Week too. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, so I've been three times. And the craziest thing is like it started off so just like one random small brand sent me an email because they had seen my blog and my blog is small, you know, and I, so compared to so many influencers out there. So getting just this one small brand to be like, you can come to our show. I cried and died. I was like, oh, my gosh. So um, again, that kind of goes back to you never know who you're impacting or who's seeing right. what you're doing, you know. Um, so that was the very first fashion week I ever went to, which was 20, I think it was 2017. Um, and then, well, I guess so technically I've been four times because since then I've been a few more times. Um, and sure, like some random invites might come in. It's really hard to come by, but I've kind of learned you just got to you know, go get it. You got to pitch yourself and, you know, yes. ask to go. So I didn't know that at first. And then I started asking around. I started asking other influencers. And what it comes down to with Fashion Week is you got to ask to go. <laughs> and <laughs> you got to be willing to put yourself out there and just really focus on what you can bring to the table. Like I will email. I, right now I have the privilege of, you know, saying I work at BuzzFeed, but before then, I'll be like, I have a blog, I have an Instagram, I'll make sure I take an Insta story. And, you know, just really kind of, you know, reaching out to smaller brands and being, you know, I just saw someone say advocate for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like you have to be willing to just put yourself out there and go for the things you want to do. Because once I went to one fashion show, I was like, I need to go to more. (laughs) So I was like, what brands do I have a chance of getting into? And I would just like, start, uh, you just go to the site and look at who the press people are and email them. And there's certain apps and stuff out there as well that you can use that will kind of help a little bit, you know, but it's really just sending emails ahead of time and um, networking with other people who you know might be more familiar with fashion week so yeah it's a lot of like work ahead of time but it's been really fun it's been a really great experience um and it's always cool when you see black people or plus size people or people you don't you know place automatically at fashion week when you're one of them then when you see more and you're like hey girl you look fly you know it's just so positive and so fun and you kind of make your own uh you know you kind of bring your own joy to this world that is seen as so 
straight size, so white, so, you know, elite. And yes. uh, once you realize, hey, I can get in, I can do this, I can sit at shows, you know, it's like, oh, I can, I can do this. And you just, you keep doing it. And then once you go to a few fashion shows, you might get invited to more. There's also so many other things like events and uh, parties that you can go to if you can't necessarily get into a show. So yeah. yeah, it's really just about getting in there and putting yourself out there. I agree as well. Well said, I agree. And I think uh, one thing uh, people that go to fashion pretty frequently, they understand is that that is your moment to display your own personal style. You know, yeah. and and it, it is what it is. You could wear five hats and walk into Spring Studios, and guess what? Nobody's gonna say take off one because that is part of your style. So, I think what you just mentioned is a really great key advice about Fashion Week and being able to attend, and then being able to also just go and see what are some of the current trends for that particular year and season. So my question also to you is what were some of your favorite shows or things that you may have seen in a show that you personally liked? Oh, yeah. So I'm always looking for this is just me being me. I'm always looking for the diversity in a show because I feel like if I can't see myself in these clothes, then you know, whatever, but <laughs> I can still appreciate the fashion. I can appreciate the trends, but I'm always looking for the diversity. So I've been to some really cool shows and ones that stick out to me are, uh, so a brand called Chromat. Oh, uh, they're yeah. always, Chromat's great. Yes, they always have body diversity, race diversity, gender diversity on their runway. And um, I feel like when a brand can speak to a lot of people, that's something special because we all know that you know, if you're a good designer, you can dress a mannequin and you can dress a model on the runway. Like, that's what designers do. But when yes. you can speak to a lot of people and have a cool concept or like maybe edgy music, something unexpected, that's what stands out to me at Fashion Week. Because, you know, we can see the same thing over and over again. It's the brands that are bringing something new and fresh and trying to reach more people. Wow, wow. I totally agree. And I think that, like you said, that sometimes um, fashion can get so repetitive by having the same models and you can have sometimes the same thing. So I totally agree with you on that uh, aspect where you're seeing a lot of diversity and then you're seeing also a lot of people that represents who the real world looks like. And that's what I like to say. Represents yes. people that you would see every day, maybe walking down the street. So Chromat too, like you mentioned, I love the brand and I love what they stand for. And I also love that how... Every season, they have like a trend, but they never stay, they never forget their natural core values to what they're trying to represent, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. It's, it's great. So my other question, um, one of my last questions about Fashion Week is overall your style. So do you plan your style like weeks in advance or it's like, hey, you know what? I'm just wearing this today and hey, it is what it is. Oh my gosh, so I'm the worst person to ask this because I am so unorganized when it comes to Fashion Week specifically. I'm always so uh, like thinking about what am I going to wear, what am I going to wear, and then it's the day before, and I'm like, what can I throw together? OMG. So <laughs> I am the worst because I know a lot of people like really plan ahead of time and they work with brands on what to wear, and you know, they put a lot of thought into it. and. I'm sure it pays off, but me, I'm like, okay, what do I have that I haven't worn? Because, you know, you're trying to get photos and all of that. So I'm like, what do I have that I haven't worn? What have I been scared to wear? What is, like, super bright and crazy and fun, but I'll still feel good in? So uh, I feel like I really just try to figure out what do I want to be photographed in? What will I be happy being photographed in? and just kind of go off of that my style like i said is pretty chill like i i love sneakers and i love um like a you know like simple things like a statement jacket uh you know whatever so i feel like i'll play off of my shoes or my accessories and then be like okay what else can i put on that i'll feel good in <laughs> oh wonderful wonderful i think those that is great because and I, I really love your response in that because I think it goes to show that even though people may attend Fashion Week and stuff, we're just as normal as anybody else as far as like, hey, you know what? I don't have to necessarily wear a designer brand to be fashionable. I can have what I have in my closet. I can have something that it means a lot to me. And I can also be fashionable with that. And I think that is what really 
um, represents a lot of us, but sometimes it's not really necessarily shown in social media as much because I know sometimes people see the glitter and the glamour, but they don't necessarily see that, hey, you know what? I'm happy. This is, you know, like you said, my statement jacket. I love this jacket. It works for me. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that about designers because you get, you do feel so much pressure, you know, to be in head to toe, whatever, Gucci or Louis. And I don't have that. And I don't have the budget for that. So, yeah. you know, and it, it, it can be stressful and you can really feel that pressure for sure. I have definitely. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, this goes back to what I said earlier about social media and also with dressing for fashion week what do you feel good in because if you don't feel good in those pictures or sitting there with all these fashion people like that's really all that matters and designer or not designer I've had people compliment a skirt I remember this was last fashion week people were complimenting this like it was like this cool shredded denim skirt I was wearing and it was from forever 21 <laughs> what? Awesome. Yes, and everyone was complimenting it and I was like Thanks. <laughs> but, yeah so I mean of course of course y'all would love to you know be able to afford all the finest designers but if you can just just work with what you got and make sure you feel good it's so funny you said that because I remember my first uh fashion week when I went to fashion week I had went to uh Tadashi Shoshi I had went to that show and I remember I had these shoes and it's so funny because or once I lived in Florida, they had like this shoe place called like Shoe Carnival. I don't know if you ever heard of that oh, place. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's like a shoe, Walmart. They have all kinds yes. of different shoes. It's not like name brand or anything. And I remember I bought these black heels from there. And the thing I loved about them, they were like a kind of like a block heel, but they were so comfortable. I could wear them for work. I could wear them with a night out, but they were just so comfortable. And I remember I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to wear these shoes, you know, I really wanted yes. to be comfortable because I had a lot of running around that I had to do that particular day. And everybody was like, wow, I love that shoe. And I'm like, if only they know that that come from Shoe Carnival, they would <laughs> they would be like, oh my God, why are you even sitting in a show? But I'm like, you know what, it was my favorite shoe. Sadly, I had to retire them because I wore them to the ground. But I think it was to tell you, it was perfect. I was comfortable and it just made all the difference. So, yes. Oh my gosh. That yeah. also reminds me the photo you used for the flyer for this, um, like the lime green bright jacket. Yeah. Uh, I just did a photo shoot in that. That was from the thrift store. I probably paid 20 what? bucks for it. So, wow. yeah. Thrift yeah, store has a lot of great things also. Yes. I think you can, you can really reinvent your style there and you can get a lot of great deals at the thrift store also. So that's great. That is great. And I do want to definitely move on to the next question is COVID-19 quarantine has helped people find new talents. Did you learn anything new over the quarantine? Oh, that's a fun question. I am not a great cook. <laughs> and I know it's like something I'm like always embarrassed to admit. I'm like, I don't cook a lot of different things. I make pasta all the time. But, uh, pasta. <laughs> but um, so I've been really trying to cook more on quarantine. I've used the slow cooker a little bit more, tried to buy some new ingredients, eat healthier, well, kind of eat healthier. So I've been trying to cook more. Um, and I hopped on the whipped coffee trend. And <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah, I did. I did. I've actually been making it like probably like once a week. So Ooh. yeah, I like it. Um, yeah. And other than that, oh, I bought a Nintendo Switch and started playing Animal Crossing. So Ooh, oh <laughs> my gosh. Yes, basically I fall into all the trends, clearly. But that <laughs> but is so nice. That is dope. So I must say, what is your favorite thing you felt that you've cooked so far? Ooh, um, oh, I made this white chicken chili and it was so easy I just Ooh. made it in a slow cooker but like I said I'm so used to just making like pasta and like eggs in the morning like really easy basic things so yeah. the fact that I tried a new recipe and uh, made something I didn't ever make before made me happy and that was pretty good it was like a, a light easy dinner I just sat in the slow cooker all day and it was really good oh that sounds good I think we got to drop that recipe you know and then yes, we got to have a jacket while we're eating it too man that yes. sounds so good <laughs> yes, I was I um, one thing I could definitely uh, give to you as a tip is, I don't know if you're a big fan of Trader Joe's, but Trader Joe's has a lot of different meals 
that are kind of like grouped together. And even if you're not the best cook, I'm telling you, you could be able to whip up some things that are great. I know my uh, family here, they love Trader Joe's. And I've always been a Trader Joe's person, but I'm saying they have some really easy uh, like uh, vegetable fried rice, or they have this thing called like a Kung Pao chicken. And it's kind of like all prepped so you can make it yourself. They have all the ingredients. And what I love about it is like, this is great. And the price is even better. It's like probably that Kung Pao chicken is probably like three bucks for that whole set. Uh, everyone always tells me I need to go. I need to go. I think it's on 6th Avenue by the Fashion District, I believe. Oh, yeah. There's Somewhere over there. But yeah, yeah you would I think you would definitely um, love Trader Joe's because like I mentioned, it, it doesn't take uh, any kind of like, you know how sometimes people cook with different things like a lot of different utensils and things. You don't need any of that. It's very simple, very straightforward. And it's, the taste is great. And I'm just like, oh, what? Okay, that looked now. I had to go. Uh, I was just like, mm, I'm going to Trader Joe's and get something to eat. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I, I swear so many people are obsessed with it and I've only been a couple times and I think I was doing it wrong. Like I didn't know uh, like the, the Trader Joe's secret. So I need to go and try to cook more things, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll get you a little list of some different basics. Yes. Because don't get me wrong, Trader Joe's have some great items, but I do feel that there's some things it's like, okay, you can pass. You can just stick with these basics. Like they have great pasta. I know you mentioned you love pasta. I love pasta. So yes. they have great different pasta things. So um, moving along, I definitely wanted to touch on this one is due to the recent current events around race and equality, we would love to hear more about your Black Lives Matters resources that is on your blog, um, on your blog website. Oh, yeah, I love to talk about that. So um, I mentioned this earlier, I'm biracial. So I have white and black family. And I feel like something that was hard for me from the beginning was trying to tell like white members of my family as well as you know white friends how I was feeling and how people in my family and my friends were feeling and trying to really convey urgency to them and uh, really trying to try to explain things calmly so people hear you you know and right. I feel like that was the approach I took in my my posts and personal conversations on the phone and it can be stressful and exhausting. I'm sure everyone, you know, who's trying to explain their feelings gets it. It's a lot and it's tiring. But, you know, some people are willing to listen. And some people told me, oh, I never thought about it like that. Or I never, you know, you know, I never really uh, understood that all these things were happening, which I don't know. I'm always like, how? But, <laughs> but yeah, it's okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah, so people are learning and some people are going to be willing to learn and some people are not. And you have to decide how to use your energy and, you know, try to educate people who are willing to listen. And um, so I thought that kind of, a, I don't want to say easy, but like something I could do was to just kind of utilize my blog to get out some important resources because I know that a lot of my family members look at my blog, a lot of my friends so, um, yeah, I basically just took days compiling um, resources, like petitions to sign, orgs to donate to, Black-owned businesses that I personally really like, and just made this huge list, I guess, on my blog. And it's just going to live there because these yeah. are ongoing things that are always going to be happening until we dismantle white supremacy. So, yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, I made that resource on my blog and it's gonna stay there and I feel like it's just such an easy thing for people to be like okay I feel like I'm not helping let me go click and see what petitions I can sign where I can donate to today you know because this is such an ongoing thing and if you just we're doing a little bit every day it's gonna make a difference I agree and um, I encourage the audience members and everybody that are definitely watching this today to please head on over to her page check out her resource guide. I personally checked it out. And what I loved about it, it was very straightforward. It was easy to understand. There were a lot of great details and it was categorized so nicely. So I think that is a great resource that you want to share with friends or family that may be too, uh, unfamiliar about issues, unfamiliar about where to start. I loved your resource guide. So please, please, please make sure to um, take a look at her website. And while you're also there, make sure to do you have a uh, newsletter where you can subscribe to your newsletter also. 
Yes. I have newsletter and basically it just recaps every, just once a month. It's not crazy because I know you guys don't have time to read a bunch of emails and I don't <laughs> have the time to make a bunch of emails. So. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's just monthly recaps of my blog posts and, um, you know, YouTube videos, TikToks, whatever I did that month. It's just a monthly newsletter. But yeah, the last one I sent out on Juneteenth and I had all the BLM resources and posts that I've been doing lately oh, in that God. newsletter. Yeah. yeah, so that was, um, I felt like a nice way to just give it another push and be like, mm -hmm. look at this if you haven't yet. <laughs> nice, nice. So. Yeah, so I encourage you all to please go take a look at the resources and sign up for the newsletter because you are getting valuable resources here, people. And I'm telling you, I think that we definitely, as uh, influencers and bloggers alike, I think we also definitely have to uplift smaller uh, platforms because yes, a larger platforms are doing it, but I feel that on a smaller scale is just that in tune to the voice of the people because we are able to talk to people every day. We're able to have that time and dedicate ourselves to be able to provide accurate and correct information. So it, it, it just all makes a difference because I've seen a lot of different resources. But what I loved about yours was the fact that I was just like, wow, it was so detailed. I knew exactly what I, um, what I was getting into when I was looking at different things. And those things definitely makes a difference. Yes, I agree. Grow together. And growth yes. and being able to support and is, is, is an amazing thing. I was mentioning to a friend of mine the other day, I always say that what is for you will always be for you. I don't believe in any kind of competition because I don't believe I'm designed to do anything. I'm designed to do what was made for me. But along the way, you have to give credit when credit is due. We can't give people flowers when they can't smell it. That's what I like to say. Yes, I love it. I yeah. love it so much. Yes. yes, I agree. So please, everybody, go check that out. So um, following to our next question is, how can our audience members continue to support you and your blog? Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so, you know, I... I am big on sharing everything. So almost every blog post I promote on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook, you know, just get it all out there. And this is my advice to any creator, get on all the platforms, use them all, because I feel like we have such a heavy focus on Instagram right now, but you never know how long that's going to last. You know, you never know. So uh, that's why I also have a newsletter because I'm like, I can just kind of compile everything and, um, you know, just always have, people seeing my stuff from different places so yeah I'd say follow me on Instagram of course we're all we're all growing we're all learning we're all you know sharing our stories um and then yeah check out my blog and subscribe to my newsletter it's kayla'schaos.com there's a little pop-up so you can sign up for the newsletter um and I'm on everything TikTok Twitter uh Pinterest <laughs> so, nice nice yeah Wonderful. yeah I'll definitely have to check out those other platforms as well. I feel like I'm like a uh, grandma when it comes to Pinterest because I'm always liking other things. And I'm like, wait, I, don't I have a Pinterest? I'm supposed to pin stuff. And then I'm down a loophole again. So I will definitely have yeah. to be more into uh, Pinterest. And I do love TikTok. TikTok has been really um, interesting as far as how people are getting creative with different content. So I think oh, that TikTok's is great. TikTok's fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's you have to learn it kind of as a learning curve but it's fun yes yes and um moving along to so uh, one of our final questions here is what is next for your initial brand oh yes um <laughs> i feel like a lot of people have asked me what's next in my career and i really love my job at buzzfeed and i wouldn't even say i even know what's next journalism wise but like overall professionally I want to grow myself and grow my personal brand you know and I feel like uh really just that just means consistency you know posting to my blog being present on different social media platforms and being just real and honest responding to people talking to people like okay. you know that's really what social media is about and communities right. so yeah, I'd say that my biggest goal is really just continuing to grow and be myself. And that sounds so, you know, so cliche, but I yeah. feel like you can be so focused on, you know, a specific number or a specific platform and you can kind of, you know, get wrapped up in it a little bit and get stressed. But yeah, I just want to keep trying all the things and doing all the things and hopefully grow, you know, as I keep as I keep sharing. 
I agree. And I definitely see that for you. I definitely see your growth. And I mean, like, even throughout what the past couple of weeks, there's definitely been a lot of amazing content growth. And I also definitely see you in a director position where you're overseeing in a media publication, because I think with your yeah. personality and with your talent is definitely cannot be overlooked. So I'm definitely <laughs> manifesting that for you. And I definitely see great things coming for you in the future. So I definitely want to open the um, floor to questions. If you do have questions for Kayla, please make sure to uh, leave them there in the comments or you could kind of go through this little question button here where you can ask questions. So please be able to ask questions and um, if there's something you would also like to know in addition to what you just said. So I really appreciate everybody that is definitely encouraging and definitely putting a lot of kind words and so many nice things. So I definitely would say I appreciate you all at this time. So please get your questions coming in. Yes, my friend Leah. Hey, Leah. What's your question, girl? Oh, nice. We have a nice question here that says, what keeps you going when you're down? Oh, I love that. Um, oh, it's so stressful sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say just the support system, my friends, you know, like having people you can talk to or call up when you're down, like and vent to. Venting is huge. <laughs> just kind of getting things off your chest. I'm actually a big at compartmentalizing and I'll like hold a lot in. But, you know, like I said, I have my roommates, my best friend and Leah. Hey, girl. And I have a lot of friends who are willing to text me and check on me and it's major it's major so yeah check on your friends even the ones you think that are like doing good and successful and having fun like check on them because they might need to vent about something <laughs> i agree i think that is great advice that you mentioned because i think even initially with this quarantine we've all been so distant from friends and family and we haven't been able to have the opportunity to get a chance to see our friends or meet for brunch and different things like that. So I think that sometimes in our day-to-day uh, -day schedule, we are so busy. We definitely have to sit back and say, Hey, let me see how so-and-so is doing. Let me see how this person may be doing. So I, I totally agree with that. And that's great advice. Great, great advice. And yes, please open up um, the room for more questions. So uh, one question I do have for you now is about when you were talking about the thrift store. So is there any favorite thrift stores that you may like? Oh, man. So I am not, I wasn't a big thrifter. I feel like some people, it's such a thing. And I feel like I'm kind of new to it. Like I, I haven't done a ton of thrifting. So there's a bunch of little places in I'm in Astoria and there's a bunch of little places around here so I can't wait for corona to <laughs> no longer be a thing because I haven't got to check out as many but um yeah I definitely am, am checking out more I know Buffalo Exchange is a big one in New York and that one I've checked out so I feel like the good thing about New York is there's just places all over. <laughs> so. I agree. I agree. I do want to um, open up the floor to this question. And sadly, we are in a countdown. So I'm going to be pretty quick. It says, what is something you would change in the plus size world? Oh, I love that question too. So um, I feel like there's such a, such a emphasis on, um, when you're in the plus size world, really just either you have to be obsessed and body positive all the time. And it can be like so much pressure to just love everything about yourself. Like I found myself being like, oh, I don't like my double chin in that photo, but that means I'm not body positive. And you know, and I feel like we have to be easier on ourselves, specifically in the plus size community, because of course we want to teach people how to love themselves and give them those tools and that confidence to feel better about themselves but we also put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be like I can't say I don't like this about myself because then I'm not body positive and we you know we just have to accept ourselves at the end of the day we have to learn you know learn to focus on the good inside of the bad and in addition to that I just want to add that in that whole outside world not just in the plus community there's always that like preconceived notion that you have to hide your body and like wear black because it makes you look smaller and all of that and in case you guys haven't already learned by talking to me I don't play that I would rather not wear black I would rather wear sequins and animal print and lime green so I think that we need to just kind of 
work on just doing what we want to do at the end of the day. Like, no matter what, just feel good because you 